Hello and welcome to an Unreal Engine 5 tutorial on homing rockets or homing missiles. Um, if you want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing then grab yourself this pack from the marketplace, uh, it's free. Um, I'm not using much out of it, just some particle effects, sounds and that particular rocket there. Um, right, let's get into it and I'll give you a demonstration of what we're creating today. So it's uh, all built in the first person um, template. And I've extended our little area a little bit to give us a bit more room to demonstrate this. So, here we go. And as you can see there, they actually follow the thing we've, uh, we've targeted as well. So, for any moving objects, it, this will work just, just as good as station, stationary objects. Let's select that one. You can see if you missed, um, I'll explain why in a second and how to combat that if you want to. Um, so, right, I'm going to cut here and delete everything I've done so I can do it all fresh so we're all on the same page. Right, so first of all, take yourself into first person, blueprints and weapon components. Um, in here we're going to set up the mechanism for targeting a particular um, thing in our world. Um, we're going to do that with a line trace. So I'm just going to for now set it up on keyboard E. It's um, quite a nice easy one to reach. Um, don't set up your inputs like this. This is just for a, for a quick example. So we're going to line trace by channel and our start location, we've got some useful things up here for us already. So get player camera manager. So all my projectile tut tutorials um, won't work on multiplayer. You're gonna have to figure out another way of getting this. Um, it's not necessarily gonna get the correct camera. Um, so yeah, be, be aware of that <clears throat> if you are doing some sort of multiplayer thing. So I'm gonna get world location. Not that one. Which one was it? Get act to location, that's the one. So the start of our trace, that line we're gonna draw, is gonna be the location of our camera. Now we need to get the endpoint. So Using the camera again, we're going to get a forward vector. And we're going to multiply that by a number because that's just going to tell us which way the camera's facing. Now we want to be shooting it out. So I'm going to make a literal int and we'll set that for 5,000. It's a pretty big number. You might want to mess around with the range of your targeting for your, for your own project yourself and you can put this as a variable instead of a literal int. And then we can add that to our world location so we know where we're shooting from. Plug that in. That should be shooting a line out 5,000 units from us now. So let's quickly test that out. So set the uh, draw debug type to duration so you can actually see it. Let's go into our world and have a play. So when I press E, yep, draws a line. So that's not enough though, is it? We need more than that. So on the out hit, break the hit results. And we want the component of what we're hitting. So promote to variable and plug that in. That's all we need for this. This component is what we're going to feed um, our homing um, data so it knows what it's chasing. Um, right, so now to make the actual missile itself. To go to whatever folder you put your projectiles in. And a blueprint class, actor, and name it accordingly. Mm -hmm. 
open that up. Let's open on my second monitor for some reason. There we go. So we're going to need a few components in here. Um, we'll start off with a static mesh. And drag that onto the default scene route. It makes your static mesh the default scene route then. Um, particle system. Um, depending on what particles you're using, if you're following along with me, it'll be a cascade particle. If you've got your own particles, um, the newer Niagara particle system might be better for you. A radial force. This will be the uh, the explosion uh, that pushes um, the physics-enabled actors away from it. One note on this radial force: the impulse strength. If you set that to a minus, it actually pulls actors in towards it. So you can create like singularity or um, black hole grenades and things like that. It's, it's quite interesting to play with, but that's not for this project. Um, another component, or our last component, is a projectile movement. Right, um, so we've set a few things in here. The static mesh, type in rocket, and you'll see our rocket from our asset pack there. Um, particle system, type in rocket again, and look for rocket launch a trail. This will be like the flame behind the rockets. Radial force. Um, we mess around with the settings of the radial force just to get the the best impulse. But I'm, I'm going to leave it as default. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, radius I'll put up a little bit. But that's 600. And I'm going to tick this. Um, if you've watched my grenade video, you'll know what this is. But um, if this is ticked, then it ignores the mass of any object and treats them all the same. So they'll all explode out at the same rate. Um, if you've got objects and you've seen that are all different masses and you want them to move in a different way, uh, then by all means, untick that. Just make sure you mess with this number a little bit um, to adjust accordingly. Uh, projectile movement. The speeds I was just using for that example at the start of the video was 1100. 1100 there. Rotation follows velocity. That's quite important. That will make sure our static mesh will always be aiming in a direction of travel. So we won't be traveling sideways and things like that. Um, should bounce no uh, gravity scale. So that's a zero. Otherwise we're going to have a lot of dip on our rocket. And down here is a homing projectile. Yes, it is. Homing acceleration magnitude. So you know when some of those rockets missed its target. This is down to what number I put in here. So this is basically the the turn rate of the rocket, how, how much <clears throat> um, or how fast it can aim towards its projectile. And this is going to be battling with, with these numbers up here. So the higher you set this, um, the quicker it can turn. So I'm going to set it to 2000 because that was the example we used at the start. And then we can come in and mess with it and change it and see what happens if you set it really high. Right, then a couple of other things um, to do in here. So I'm going to use the static mesh collision for this on component here. To, by all means, feel free to come into here and get a capsule collision or a sphere collision or something if you if you prefer. But I'm going to use the static mesh one. So click on static mesh, scroll down, and we want the on component hit. So first of all, we're going to get our radial force and type in impulse. We're going to fire an impulse that's going to push things all over the place. Then we want an explosion, an explosion particle. So emitter at location. And the location is inside this hit result. So we drag this out, break it, and we get all this info. So we can plug that location straight in there. I think that's all we need from here. Yeah. Then we can play a sound at location. 
If I type an explosion, I'm sure that's going to find us something. Rocket launcher explosion queue. Grab that and we can pull our location in there again. And then we destroy ourselves. We don't want this this actor persisting in the world after it's exploded. And that's it. That's all the information we need inside the actual rocket itself. So back to our weapon component. Let's move some things around. Move this out of the way. This out of the way. And break that. So hold Alt and click to break. Right, make sure you've got your home in rocket selected in here. That's the uh, that's where we spawn our projectiles from when we're firing our gun. And from here, we want to pull out of this return value and get our projectile movement. And then pull out that and set homing target component. So this is where we need to plug in our hit component down here. So get that from there, plug it in, and now the rocket knows what it's chasing. If you don't plug that in, or you don't actually select something with this, it just works like a normal rocket, it'll just be shooting where you aim it. So if you want to build a normal rocket, you know from this video how to do that now. But uh, if you want to build the, the guided one, it's only this one extra step really, and a couple of tick boxes. All right, so all that's joined up again to the sound and the montage. Let's test it out. I should have actually selected a target version. <laughs> right, select that box. There we go. It's quite satisfying to watch. So let's have a look at the homing projectile again and the projectile movement. Let's change this homing acceleration magnitude. I'll put it somewhat obscene like 8,000. Let's see what happens now. So their turn rate is, is much sharper, so it doesn't matter where that box gets flung to, everything that's chasing it turns a lot quicker. And yeah, just can't miss. So the higher the higher that number is, the the more accurate the rocket's going to be. But I think the less realistic. Uh, I, I like to see it arcing in the air a little bit. And it'd be nice to know if if an enemy is shooting this at you that you do have a chance to escape. It's not always going to hit you. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, any questions? Leave them in the comments. Any interesting projectiles you you want me to create? Then then let me know, and I'll I'll be happy to to help out. Um, also, with this one, I was thinking about doing a follow-up video, so we can have multi-targets. Um, so I could select a box from over here, a box from the back, and a box from here. Press the trigger, and three rockets fly off in those directions. Um, so yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. It's something I've been thinking about, something I've been wanting to do. So, all right, that's it for this one. Bye bye.